Bula. So I'm here to tell you about a very simple story. And the story is not about some king, some prince, some elephant, some mouse. But the story is about you, your story. Who are you? What does it mean to you that you are alive? When you wake up in the morning, do you think about your responsibilities? Or do you think about this gift that you're awake? That you're awake. What does it mean to be awake? Nothing to you. Nothing. Ah, what time is it? I'm late. I have to do this. Oh, today is, I have to do this. Today I have to do this. This is how we think. This is how we have programmed ourselves to be. And the unfortunate thing about this is that one day you will know how important it is to be awake. But that day will be the day when you will be fighting to be awake. And there is no time to have this grand vision. There is no time to say, ah, now I understand. Boom. And you're gone. Whatever you do in your life, whatever you do in your life, you will become good at it. That's the rule. Long time ago, this is exactly what Kabir said. That whoever, whatever you practice, you'll get good at it, even like a rope. Because in the old days, they used to have a well, and they would pull the rope, and the rope would rub against the rock. Even as the rope rubs against the rock and leaves a mark, only because it happens again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. So, in this story, what do you do? It's your story. You know. You fill in the blanks. You know what you do. You talk, do you think about your problems? Do you? Of course you do. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> but that's what we're going to get good at, thinking about problems. And is that what you want? To be an expert at thinking about problems? Because that's what's going to happen. And then if one day, God forbid, you didn't have problems, you would have nothing to think about. It would be a boring day. What do I do? What do I do today? So in this story, do you get fulfilled? Remember the Cinderella story? Cinderella finally finds her prince and lives happily ever after. Now you have to realize 
that if she got married to the prince, that didn't happen. Because in marriage you have issues. Someday the wife is not feeling good, tells the husband, get out of here. Someday the husband isn't feeling so good, tells the wife, you get out of here. So I don't know how that story went, but is your story happily ever after? Or is it completely tangled, tangled in all the things that us human beings fight every day? What does he think about me? What does she think about me? She looked at me the wrong way. He looked at me the wrong way. He didn't say the right thing to me. I came, up, I came and he didn't say good morning. He didn't say good evening. He didn't do that. She burnt the parotta. She burnt the bread. She did this. He did that. That's it. My boss is not happy with me. I might lose my job. I need a promotion. I need to get better at this. I need to go at more so training. I have to have a loan. I need more money. I need this. I need that. I need that house. I need that car. I need this. I... Is that what goes on? Or is this heart of yours filled with an appreciation for being alive? Is this heart of yours filled with gratitude for every breath that comes into you? You know, the reason why I came to Fiji and to talk to you, to bring this message to you. It's not just Fiji. I go around the world, this is what I do. And people say to me, your message, that's in the scriptures. It's true. But I also know, nobody reads them. Why don't they read them? Because you think the world would have these problems if people were really reading what has been already written. They memorize them like parrot. Polly want a cracker. Does parrot really understand Polly? Does parrot really understand want? Does the parrot really understand cracker? No. But will the parrot say these things to get a cracker? Yes. And if it's not a cracker, that's fine too. Something it can eat. So people have all that that they want, they need. But I come and I put it in the context of today. The message of today. Not of people who were 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, but the message for the people of now. That yes, you can have that appreciation, that you can have that beauty in your life even in this day and age. In the middle of the battlefield, Are you two not fighting? Are you not also engaged in a battle? Yes. Do you need, do you have a need in you to feel the peace? Yes. Yes. And where did this need come from? Understand this one point. Where did the need for peace in your life come from? 
You have gone to school, you may be still go to school or go to college. There was a time you didn't know about school. There was a time you didn't know about college. The need to go to school, the need to go to college was taught to you. It's not innate. You have a job. The need to be able to go to your workplace, that need was taught to you. It was not innate. Hunger was innate. Nobody taught you hunger. Your mother didn't teach you, oh, you're hungry now. No. A baby knows when it's hungry. Baby knows when it's thirsty. Baby knows when the baby is sleepy. The baby knows when the baby is awake. Nobody has to teach the baby these things. The baby knows. If. If. The need for peace is like the need for sleep. If the need for peace is like the need for food. If the need for peace is like the need for water. If. This is, I'm just saying this. If, then you will not be able to live without peace. You cannot live without water. You cannot live without sleep. It's a torture. You cannot live without food. You will die. You cannot, you cannot live without peace. You will walk, but you will not know why. You will wake up, but you will not know why I am awake. You will look up, and all you will see is just a sky. You will look down, and all you will see is dirt. A person who has understanding in their lives looks at the dirt and laughs. One day, I was going somewhere and there was dirt everywhere and the person there said, no, no, come, come this way. There's no dirt. And I said, that's what I'm made out of. This is what I do every day, right? You do. I do. We wash the dirt, right? We take a shower, we wash the dirt. The dirt washes the dirt. Trying to be clean, trying to get rid of the dirt that it is. But you don't think you're dirt, do you? No. Who are you? <laughs> I am so and so. I am so and so. One time, there was a doctor. He was brilliant. Brilliant. And he knew that one day, Death was going to come for him. So he worked very hard 
in creating an exact replica of himself. Exact. Just a story. So when the time came, he lay down and put the replica right next to him. Death came, was only allowed to take one. One. So death came, looked at both of them, and said, uh-oh, I'm only allowed one, there are two of them here. So the death thought and thought, how am I going to do this? I'm only allowed one and I can't just guess. I have to take him. It's his time. It's up. So then the death figured out a way. And the death said, Doctor, you have done an amazing job of duplicating yourself. Amazing. My hat's off to you. But you forgot one thing. And the doctor is lying there going, hmm, I wonder what I have forgotten. How could I forget anything? I have done a perfect job. His ego kicks in. And he goes, what? <laughs> and Death said, that. You have so much ego, not real ego, so much false ego, of what you think you have accomplished, that in your whole plan you took into account everything but that one thing. Of being if you would have just stayed humble and shut up, there was no way I was going to figure out who's who. And I was going to be on my way. But now, come with me. In our little understanding, we don't think we are dirt. Do you know that there isn't that much new material that comes to earth. Everything on this earth is pretty much recycled. Do you know that? It's recycled. Dust is compressed, turned into stone. Stone is t rubbed by either water or whatever, the wind, and turned right back into dust. From this, isn't this what it's about? This. Today you are this, tomorrow you could be a banana. <laughs> That's what happens. So. My suggestion to you is this. Before you become a banana, or an eggplant, or a tomato, or a potato, that whilst you can whilst you can, of all the things that you will do, or can do, or want to do, do this too. Be fulfilled. Because as a banana, you won't have that opportunity.
you won't. As a tomato, you won't have that opportunity. Just because you are a human being, you have this opportunity to be fulfilled, to have peace in your All these things that are happening in the world have always happened in this world. Believe me. Believe me. Good, bad, right, wrong, the tussle for this has always been going on in this world. Civilizations were made, civilizations were destroyed. People achieved, built pyramids. In the last, one of the times actually I went to see the pyramid, the first time I went to Egypt, I was on my way to Zambia to, to do an uh, event. And I stopped in Egypt. And I was there in the afternoon, and there was a little boy taking a leak on the pyramid. And I was shocked. And then I started laughing. This is what happens. This is what happens. Time will take. Put that, put that pyramid right back to dust where it came from. It's doing it. But you know the presentation they have at the pyramids is the immortal. No. That's not how they made it. Believe me, it's already break, broken up dramatically. Because nothing in this world is permanent. Permanent. No. Nothing. The sun no. The moon? No. The earth? No. No. <laughs> no. This is a gift of gifts. Blessing of blessings. You want blessings? You want blessings in your life? People go to temples to ask for blessings. People go to church to ask for blessing. People go to mosque to ask for blessing. People go to all these holy places to ask for blessings. Or what if I told you you've already blessed? You're already so blessed, you have no idea how blessed you are. You're overblessed. Every day, blessing pours in. <coughs> pours in. You want to know how? You want to know how? Every breath that comes into you, guess what? It's a blessing. You're not even aware of it. <laughs> you ask for blessings like you really know how to recognize a blessing, right? Oh, yes, I've been blessed. No. Oh. The fact that you can think, the fact that you can see, the fact that you can hear, the fact that you can feel, the fact that you are alive is a blessing. But what do people consider a blessing? If there is milk coming out of a rock. <laughs> to me, milk coming out of a rock is an abnormally, not a blessing, not a miracle. You wanna, you wanna see a miracle? You wanna see a miracle? I'll show you how to see a miracle. Stand in front of a mirror and open your eyes and you will find a miracle looking right back at you. 
You are a miracle. Don't you think so? Dirt talking, isn't that a miracle? <laughs> Dirt walking, isn't that a miracle? Dirt dancing, isn't that a miracle? And the dirt can love. Isn't that a miracle? Isn't that a miracle? Open your eyes, then you will see a miracle everywhere. That the sun shines, that's a miracle. That there is a wave on the ocean, that's a miracle. And miracle of miracles. Another one from Kabir. <laughs> that a drop resides in the ocean, everyone knows. No big news, right? A drop resides in the ocean, everyone knows, but that the ocean resides in the drop, only a few know. That's a miracle. This is the drop. Each one of you is the drop, and the ocean resides. You know what this is? You know what existence is? Exist. Existence is? It is the two most impossible things coming together. The impossible. <laughs> the finite? and the infinite. There is a rule of physics. Two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time. You read that one? You know that one? If you ever had an accident, you know about that one. Two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time. That law is defied in your existence. In the same place, at the same time, the infinite resides in the finite. It's only for a short period of time that the law is defied. But that's what makes you, you. That's what makes this existence a miracle. That's what makes this existence a blessing. And if you want to see this view This view that is inside of you, there is a way you can do it. And first, requirement is to have a heart of a What? Not to make a pilgrimage walking backwards, climbing 30,000 steps, sacrificing 15 goats, bringing 70 tons of milk. No. 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 Heart of 
a child. So, do you have heart of a child? Do you? Do you? Do you? Interesting question. Why is it an interesting question? Do you have pictures of yourself when you were young? Do you? At home? Look at it. And ask yourself, what happened to that person? Where'd that person go? Obviously that person was there, right? That's the picture. But where is that, where is that person now? Is, is that you? But you've changed. Could it be like a pearl? You know how a pearl is made? Little element and then one layer after another 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 layer. The oyster keeps putting those layers on and it becomes a pearl. So, could it be that that child is still there but there is another layer and 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 top of another layer. And now the child looks like this. And if this layer was taken off and another 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 layer was taken off, could it be that? that child would be there. And I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about ignorance. Ignorance. Child is not ignorant. And you could, you could make a case for that. You know, you could, you, could, you, could, you could write a book on it. Is child ignorant? Nope. Doesn't know a lot. Doesn't know physics and doesn't know chemistry and doesn't know math and doesn't know calculus and doesn't know, you know, all these things. Doesn't know how to fly an airplane, doesn't know how to drive a car, doesn't know how to ride a bike. So the child is ignorant, right? No. The child knows what it knows and is clear about what it knows. Not ignorant. We become ignorant because the word is ignore. We ignore. That's our ignorance. Ignore the reality. Ignore what is obvious. Ignore what the heart is saying. Ignore what we need. Ignore what is truly, truly needed in this existence. Ignore. And these layer of ignorance is what makes us not have the heart of a child. And it is beautiful. It is so beautiful. That over 2,000 years ago, Over, way over, 2,000 years ago, 
Someone stood in the middle of the battlefield And this is what they said. This is what someone said to someone. That if you desire this, if you want this, then come with the heart of a child. Who was it? Krishna. Battlefield. Kurukshetra. Who is being addressed? Archer. So, 2011. Fiji. Nandi. No battlefield. Here we are. What am I telling you? I'm telling you, come with the heart of a child. Stop ignoring the obvious. Do not be ignorant. How many of you, how many of you believe? All right. Let me ask it to you this way. How many of you believe in God? Very good. See, that wasn't so hard. You think that's enough? We're getting into some dicey territory here, but do you think that's enough? Or should you know? Or should you know? Or should you know? There is a difference in believing and knowing. In practical life, if all you do is believe, you're not going to be able to function. You have an accident. You run, you run your car from the back onto somebody else's car and the police officer says, why did you hit him from the back? And you say, well, I believed that he was going to move, but he didn't. Believe? No. Now, if you know believing is covered, but in believing, knowing is not covered. So, up till now, maybe you have felt it is sufficient to believe. Life is good, life is golden. You believe? Yes, I believe. I believe there is a God. And most people in this world, I've given God a gender. He. Right? It's he. It's not a she. He. Some have given God a face. He's old. He's got gray hair. And we all believe that, you know, 
He created the world in six days, and then the seventh day he rested. Do you know this? No. You believe this? Yes. So now here I have a question for you. Sunday is when he rested. Right? That's the day of God's rest. Why do people go to temples and churches and house of God on Sunday when he's resting? Would you go to a doctor's office when the office is closed? Would you go to a government office on the day that the office is closed? No. This enigma exists only because belief. In knowing, of course you know. Why would God need to rest? God is not like you and I. Oh, oh my God. God is the only one that doesn't need to come from anywhere or go anywhere. God is the only one that is age-less. No gray hair, no black hair, no brown hair. We have the hair or not, depending, but we have the hair issue. We have the age issue. We don't want to be old. We want to look young. Knowing. I'm not here to challenge your religion. You, need, you believe in what you believe? Fine. Of course, the religion tells you, if you don't believe, then after you die, you will not go to heaven. And you want to go to heaven. There's a lot of people I know want to go to heaven. It better be big. Otherwise, it's going to have traffic jams. <laughs> and if it is really true that there's all those angels playing harp, bring your earplugs. Because you will only be able to stand the harp business for so long. After that, it'll get tired. You know, just on earth. If you keep listening to the same music again and again and again and again, and day and night, day and night, day and night, it's, it's going to get tired. And then who is the one that's going up there? Let's see, the Chinese have the largest population. The Indians have the second world's largest population. They're working very hard to get to the top. Is there a wall around the heaven? There better be. Otherwise, what's the point of having the gates? Can you imagine just having two gates and no walls? I mean, that would be silly. People could just go around this way, this way. So you gotta, you gotta have walls, you gotta have a gate. There's the wall to keep people from coming in or going out. No, that's the difference between your house and the jail. You too have a wall around your house, and you too have gates, but they are to prevent people from coming in. In the jail, it is to prevent people from going out. That's the only difference. Which one is it? Knowing, believing. You want to believe in heaven? Go right ahead. You have... Definitely my compliments. Go right ahead. But don't forget about the heaven that exists here. It's a nice heaven. It's a beautiful heaven. And you don't have to wonder, am I in heaven? Because the heaven here you get to know, not believe. You get to know you are in heaven. Are you afraid of hell? Be very afraid of hell. 
Because the hell that exists here on the face of this earth is much worse than the one that has been described to you. Much worse. I mean, the one, the hell that has been described, you get fried, but then you are pulled out. <laughs> and refried. <laughs> the one that exists here, you don't get pulled out, you keep frying. So, this is why I don't have to challenge any religion because I'm not talking about the heaven after death, I'm talking about the heaven whilst you're alive. <laughs> to be content now, to be fulfilled now, and this is what, my friends, is going to make this a good, happy story. Isn't that where we started from? Your story? So I'm a very different kind of storyteller. The kind of story that I tell you is so that you can make your own story. And what I tell you is how to make your own story very interesting. How to make your own story beautiful. How to make your own story so that you can be, wow, that is good. And that you know, not believe. <laughs> Troubles, problems. They will come and they will go. If you are having a bad time, I'm going to play astrologer, okay? I'll tell you your future. It'll be, you'll find it very accurate. If you're having a bad time, have patience. It'll go away. If you're having a good time, have patience. It'll go away. <laughs> And then, when the bad time goes away, good time will come. When the good time comes, that will last for a little while, then the bad time will come. The good time is the time to prepare for the bad time. The bad time is to appreciate the good time. Somebody wants you to have a good time. I'm not kidding. Because it's built into the design. You love being happy. And you hate, hate being sad. It's built in. People go, oh, I wish human beings were born with a manual. No, it's even, the manual is built in. It is there. You love being happy, you hate being sad. Why do you need a manual? Isn't it obvious? Somebody wants you to seek and find happiness in your life, and guess what? You have no, absolutely no limit of happiness. You can be as happy as you want. And more, and that's fine. And more, and that's fine. And more, and that's fine. It's not like you're gonna break any bones. It's not like you're gonna get disease from happiness. Sadness, on the other hand, you cannot tolerate it well at all. Not only the sadness, as little as possible, is good. And when there is too much, yes, you may end up breaking things in your body. So, there's your manual. Now, if you're interested in this, 
then this is what I offer. And I call it knowledge. What is knowledge? A way to be able to take our attention that is running outside and turn it inside. So you can feel the feeling that is within you. What is that feeling? It is the feeling of the infinite. That's a big word. And maybe to some of you I've oversimplified it. But it is simple. Life is simple. Breath comes in, simple, goes out, simple, comes in, simple, goes out, simple. How does it begin? How did it begin? Don't forget about this part of your story. It began by you taking the first breath in. That's how it began. And how will it end? You taking the last breath. Not in, out. <laughs> Before this song ends, learn to dance with it. Be fulfilled. Be thankful. How do I, how do you even begin to have a heart of a child? You know, <laughs> I wonder if a child actually knows how, because when they're really young, they, don't, they can't say thank you. They don't say thank you. They don't, they don't say thank you for anything. They don't. They don't say, thank you. That comes later. But that doesn't mean they don't have gratitude. It's in the kiss. It's in the look. It's in that head that they put on your shoulder. It is running the way they run to you. The way they Acknowledge you. Not ignore, acknowledge you. That's gratitude. Truest gratitude. Truest. In this life, learn, learn to be thankful. Not by words, thank you, thank you. I mean, it'll get too much if we had to thank that power for every breath. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You would not, you would not be able to function. You, you understand that, right? The flight attendant might be asking, would you like something to drink? Thank you, thank you, thank you. That would not work. But the way you look, the way you admire, the way you are, Carrying that in your heart, that's all you need. Not ignoring, acknowledging. Acknowledging every day what has been given to you. That's it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Rest. Be fulfilled. Enjoy. Feel the heaven. Any which way I can help, I am here for you. Regardless of where I am on the surface of this earth, I am here for you. That's what I do. That's what I do. That's what I'm good at. That's what I'm good at. Because I've been doing it for 45 years. Day after day, after day, after day, season after season after season. That's what I'm good at. Many other things I do, I'm not that good at it. <laughs> but this, bringing 
that heaven in your life, bringing that joy in your life, just like that rope. Again and again, I have done it, and I am good at it. I can bring that peace, that beauty to your life. Thank you for coming, and please enjoy every breath you have. Thank you and good night. Thank you. This was the first time I saw him live face to face and uh, my impression I was just wow. For me today, the satisfaction of today's words of peace is fulfilled. I have this fulfillment in me.